Could you start by telling me uh, what have you been doing since you took over as chair? Well, we had a very active first year. Uh, we have been pre preparing and starting a number of our different priorities. One of them, of course, is environmental protection uh, in the case of oil exploitation in the Arctic, working both on uh, preventive uh, recommendations but also the negotiations of an oil spill cooperation uh, agreement. And this is moving on uh, in a very good way. Now that priority has been the strategic communication uh, and we will now for the deputy minister's meeting on the May 15th present the strategic communication plan uh, for decision and uh, obviously that will be a very important step. Another priority we, we set was to sort of open up for a discussion with a business in Arctic uh, on the sustainability and sort of their interests because we think we need to sort of have close cooperation with business in order to develop Arctic sustainably. And we have sort of started having different meetings and seminars on corporate social responsibility uh, in the Arctic. And also started a specific project, the Arctic Resilience Report, a Swedish sponsored project, was a decision in November to, to start it. And it will actually be a meeting here at the IPY 2012 conference of the Arctic Resilience Report uh, collaborators. Uh, it's fitting that this conference is, is actually called From Knowledge to Action. You talk about that uh, you have been making recommendations and, and reports. Uh, how do you go by to, to actually making this happen? It's, it's one thing, of course, uh, doing the research and, uh, and making recommendations, but uh, it's often harder to actually see it happen. How is that going? I, I think we're moving on that direction because, of course, Arctic Council has been called a decision-shaping forum uh, but it's becoming more and more strong and more and more concrete uh, uh, decisions are taken. We have the search and rescue agreement that was uh, signed in May last year. Now we're negotiating the oil spill response agreement, which hopefully will be signed in Kiruna when we end our uh, chairmanship. So then the Arctic Council moved into making legally binding agreements a big step. But then, of course, many of the decisions we take are recommendations, uh, but these are very important because if you follow them up, they will be applied in the different Arctic states and also in the Arctic Council work. Uh, so I think the sort of the follow-up and making good recommendations which are solid and implementable is very important for us. And uh, how, how, uh, what kind of legacy do you want to leave behind? Because. Uh, the, the chair of the Arctic Council obviously rotates between the countries and uh, it's a long time uh, now since Sweden has been the chair and, and it will be a long time again. So, of course, uh, just for Sweden in particular, uh, what kind of legacy do you want to leave behind? I hope people remember the Swedish chairmanship as being very active. Uh, that we strengthened the Arctic Council institutionally. Of course, we're setting up the Secretariat uh, now of the Arctic Council. Also hope that it will be remembered for sort of moving forward on a number of agendas on environmental protection, for example. Also making the Arctic Council scope of work broader, sort of more work on the human dimension. Uh, and also that we are have improved uh, sort of the communication uh, of the Arctic Council, not only with the strategic communication plan, but perhaps more important to speak with you and, and speak with others about what we are doing, because it's very important to bring out the voice of the Arctic Council in the sort of public discussion. How are you working with, uh, for example, Canada? Canada will take over as chair in 2013. Are you in any ways working together so that uh, the things you're doing will not uh, be forgotten and uh, not fall into some kind of a shadow? No, absolutely. It's very important that you work together between chairmanships. Uh, and as an incoming chair, you inherit a big part of your agenda. So, of course, we keep very close to Canada and discuss with them, So, because they will inherit uh, what we do. But also that we, together with them, prepare their different priorities so they are ready when they take over in May next year.